Hi, welcome back to our channel, Let's Cook with Izzy. I'm Dave. I'm Izzy. And today, we're gonna to do something special. We're gonna make Thanksgiving dinner together, right? Mm-hmm. And what are we gonna have? Do you remember? We're gonna make a turkey. Mm-hmm. We're gonna make cranberry sauce. We're gonna make stuffing. We're gonna have cooked carrots. And we're gonna have asparagus, right? Mm -hmm and mashed potatoes mm -hmm. yes basically That's the whole Stuffing. traditional thanksgiving dinner and izzy's gonna help me and i'm gonna show you some tricks to make a nice juicy turkey ready for stuffing the turkey and and getting it ready for the oven and we do not put stuffing in the turkey that's actually kind of dangerous because the inside of the turkey does not necessarily cook the same rate if you cook it until the stuffing is done on the inside the outside the meat is going to be very dry but we are going to stuff the cavity with aromatics onions. I have a red onion and a yellow onion and celery and we're going to have carrots in as a raft to set it on to keep the turkey elevated and I'll show you all that in a little bit. And we have herbs. We have um, fresh rosemary, thyme, and sage. And we'll get all those ready. Mm -hmm. Shall we? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is, I mentioned we're going to use carrots as a raft. I have here in our pan, I've laid out all the large carrots from a bag of whole carrots so that it fills the bottom and use your larger carrots because if you use little ones, they're going to cook and be overdone and they're so small that they're not going to assist in the raft part. This way, when we put our turkey in, it's going to sit on top and then any of the juices that we have, the fat um, from the turkey and everything else will drip down to the bottom. The bottom of the turkey will be raised up um, outside of that so it won't get wet and soggy. Um, and in the process, all of those spices and herbs and everything else that we have in here are going to flavor the carrots for our cooked carrots for later. And we'll retrieve those and, and set them aside when it's all done. So the first thing we need to do is we need to start peeling yeah. carrots, right? Mm -hmm. So you hold your carrot like this and like this, and then we just oh, peel it up. You're getting it out of I'm getting it all over, aren't I? We'll yeah. let the dogs eat that later. <laughs> Ooh, juice is getting on you? Yeah. You haven't even begun, girl. I'm just taking my time. You're taking your time, that's right. You're doing a good job. Tell me when to stop. As soon as all the peel is off, not in the same place. You gotta keep turning it. Oh yeah. Yep, so you take a swipe turn, swipe turn, swipe turn, just like that, until the whole thing is peeled. See, and all the skin is gone, and turn it over. Just like that. Hi, welcome back. We're finally done with all the carrots. We've, they're peeled, the ends are cut off, they're in the container, in the... In this container. Um, and something I forgot to mention, is have a bowl and keep all of the peelings, all of the ends, the onion papers, pieces, 
the tips of the celery. We're going to all use that later to make a stock when our turkeys are done and they've been cut apart and everything. We're going to make a stock out of all of this and all of this will add flavor to that stock. So now, what we want to do here... You can cut one at a time. You can cut one at a time. But what we're going to do is cut this end off right here, just like this. Okay? okay and then right see here. this end too? Just real fine. Can you do that? Yeah. Got to put it on the table. Turn it over so it doesn't roll. Always put it flat. There you go, just like that. And you're holding the knife upside down. So you want to cut with the sharp side. No, oh, no. Oh. Okay. Do that side now because you cut this one off. Real close. Okay, good job. That's, there you go. You do those two, I'll do these. Okay? We're just cutting the, t the ends off because those are old and dried up. Okay, one more. Nope, nope, close to the edge so we don't want to waste it. Good job. Okay. If you're doing it with young ones, remember to keep your fingers away because you don't want them to cut you. Okay. Put that into their bucket. Look. Should not. Nope. Get all the pieces, put them in the bucket. Okay. Now, <clears throat> what we're going to do here is little, like, since she had some extras. Here. Now cut them into chunks. So you want a chunk about um, like this. Okay? Like this? Like that. But your knife is upside down. Oh, yeah. There you go. Okay. Good job. And then we'll put the chunks up here like that. Okay? And then another side? No. You have to cut the whole thing into little chunks like that. You could cut it a little bit bigger, but that'll, that'll work. There you go. And cut that one in half. Just like that, okay? I'm gonna take these two and dice them um, into little bit smaller pieces because these are gonna go inside the cavity of the bird. Okay, while she's doing that. Right here? Yeah, that, that, that looks good right there. Hey, I'm gonna cut it in little pieces too. Well, Cutting it into little pieces because I have more practice. Here. We'll put this in here. That's fine. Okay, can I do this one? Yeah. Okay, now, now we'll do the onions. It's easiest, just cut off the two ends. And cut them in half like that. Okay. At this point, the peels come off nice and easy. It's actually easy for me. Yep. And I can do one too. Take the peels and put them in the bucket. Amazingly, the, the paper has a lot of flavor in it. So if you're always making a stock, you're going to straighten this out anyway. And it doesn't matter. So toss all the papers in to the stock as well. That's our yellow onion. It's actually easy for me Watch to... Watch your fingers. Actually, can I just peel? There's one for you to peel. And there's two. Again, what we're going to do is we don't care so much about size or anything because this is not for eating. This is all strictly to flavor. So I'm just going to cut it into little strips. You can pop that down. Once in a while, you can do this, and you can make your cuts while you're watching something else, as long as you keep your fingers out of the way. Because your goal here is to have turkey, not fingers. All right, so we have that already. Now what? We have to get our turkey, right? Yeah. Okay. Now that we're done cutting up our aromatics, we're going to start prepping the actual turkey. We put the big chunks into the bottom of the pan along with the, the carrots. 
That'll just help add the flavor and everything else. Before we get the turkey going though, what we have to do is get the neck and the giblets out. So, Iz, can you reach into that hole and grab the neck and pull it out? Just stick your hand in and grab the neck. Uh, right where? Right there. Uh, stick your whole hand in there. Uh, grab. That's what. Just grab it. It's on. It's already loose. Pull. There you go. Put it in here. Okay. Now uh, that side is done. Now over here, if you lift up this little flap right here. See here. Yeah. Now. You see that bag that's right there? Yeah. Grab that bag. Can you grab it? No. Yeah, pull. There you go. And pull, pull, pull. Oops. Oh. Don't set that anywhere. Set that in that bowl. And we pull out the giblets from the other end. Okay. Yeah. Put it in the bowl. That's gross. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Okay. Now, now that we've got that set, now what we're going to do is... It doesn't even smell like, a, like an animal. Okay, take these and put them inside there. Just the whole thing. Ah, it's going under. Well, don't worry about that. You have turkey hands, so... Yeah, all, everything has to go inside. Inside. Now, take handfuls of onions. Okay, what you want to do is take a handful of onions, both the yellow onion and the red onion. Okay. Stick that inside. Well, just shove it in there. Shove it in there. This seems like a lot of onion, but trust me, in the end, you'll be very happy that you used two full onions. Okay, now take the rest of this and spread it around and Fries are starting to be raw. Yep, just like that. Earlier, I prepared brown butter. To make oh. brown butter, you take any butter from the store, if, or if you make it, and you just start to slowly melt it and cook it. All the milk fats will come out of it, and what you, then they'll cook on the bottom and you'll get this beautiful nutty flavored brown butter so what we're going to do is take the pastry brush dip it into the butter and now paint the turkey oh yeah just like that okay i thought you said i'm going to touch the turkey well maybe we'll see just paint it. I'm using a pink Himalayan you salt. You can use any salt you want, yes. We like the pink Himalayan just because it adds some really nice flavor and some extra minerals and things too. Hey, my hand. Yep. Now, along with that, some fresh ground pepper. Okay. You take this and twist it. Okay. okay. Can you do that? Uh-huh. Everywhere? Yep, everywhere. That's a lot. Time. Okay, now what we have to do here is strip the little leaves off. To do that, grab the tip like this and then just try it again. Grab the tip and pull down backwards. Okay. And all the leaves will come off in a little pile. Okay. Okay, so here's some leaves. I'm gonna do it this way. And the wonderful thing, but you can use dried herbs too. Those work perfectly it up well. Here. Um, but mm -hmm. fresh just give a particular aroma to everything that you don't quite get from the dried herbs. Throw those in our bucket. Stems and all. Now, what we're going to do here is, okay, watch out. OK, 
Okay, now take this and sprinkle it on the bird. I mean, the turkey. Oh. It's called a turkey, not a bird. Well, it is a turkey, and turkeys oh. are birds, so. Turkeys can fly. With the sage, this is fresh sage. We're going to pick the leaves off. All of these stuff that yep. we're going to keep. Throw that in the bucket. Okay, now we're going to just kind of put these in a pile, roll them up tight, and then we're going to chiffonade the leaves into little pieces. Again, it doesn't really matter because it's all going to come off. And now I'll sprinkle this on just like you did all over. And the last herb we're going to use is our rosemary. And again, with the other one, you just go backwards. Yep. I'll give you, we have to save some for our other turkey. There you go. Thank you. Yep. And they all just come right off the stem. <laughs> if you don't get them all, that's fine because we're going to add it to the stock. Okay. Good enough. Add that and throw it in the bucket. But you can do all of that. That's fine. And now these are a little bit coarser, so you want to take and give them a good rough chop. And then we're going to put them on the turkey again. And we're going to put them back on the turkey that's right. Just like that, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, make sure it goes all over. Some in the like this too. Throw all of that in the edges. Okay. And here's our bird. What I'm gonna do is add a little bit of chicken stock now. Just to have some liquid in the bottom. This is gonna start on the, the other edge. Before we put it in the oven, we're going to cover it. Up. Huh? Mm -hmm. Cover it tight with foil because as that chicken stock in there starts okay. to get hot and boil, um, it's going to create steam, which will help cook the bird. And then we're ready to put it in the oven. And there we go. Now, what Izzy and I just prepared was about a 12, yeah, right around a 12 pound turkey. We're going to do two of those for our family. And the reason we do two, rather than one really, really big one, is that by doing two, we get twice as many legs and thighs, and twice as many wings, and everybody seems to like those. So you get more with the same amount of meat. And because it's a smaller bird, it will actually cook a little bit faster than if you stick a 25 pound bird in your oven. So now this is going to cook for roughly three hours in a little while. Stop. We're going to baste it. And now the process will be just to occasionally open it up, baste it with its own juices to make sure that everything is staying moist. And toward the end, we'll add some more butter to the skin 
and then leave the foil off to let it crisp up and brown. That sounds like a good plan? Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Okay, welcome back. What we're going to do next is get our cranberry sauce ready because mm -hmm. that is a really good thing to do ahead of time. Um, if I hadn't mentioned it before, we're cooking one bird today, which is Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving. We're going to get it all prepared and ready, set aside so that we can reheat tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll cook another bird and we'll do our potatoes and, and stuffing. But the cranberry sauce is something that's really, really simple to do ahead of time, and that's what we're going to do next. So what we're going to start with is a nice large pan, and I've got about a pound of cranberries. You want to dump those in there? Mm -hmm. And these are fresh cranberries. Make sure that they're washed. You can pick through to make sure that there's no stems. Um, and you can tell that they're fresh if you take and bounce it, and if it bounces nice, it's going to be a fresh berry. Next, what we're going to do is put in one cup of sugar. Of sugar. Now, this you can vary. I'm going to use brown sugar because brown sugar has a little bit of molasses in it, and it's going to add a nice flavor to it. <clears throat> If you don't want just brown sugar, you can use half a cup white sugar, half a cup brown sugar, or a whole cup of white sugar. Next, what we're going to do is put in a little bit of orange zest, okay? Mm -hmm. So, Izzy's going to zest an orange. You're going to take our grater right here. Mm -hmm. You're going to take the orange, and you're going to rub it across real hard, and you're going to get zest, okay? Okay. Can you do that? Mm-hmm. Nope, you're going to put this down like this, and with this hand, then you're going to press hard, oh. and you're going to get zest just like that. See how it scraped that off? And yeah. then move it, and do it again. Okay, okay? can you do that? Mm -hmm. Hold this in this hand here, this hand here. <clears throat> there you go. Good job. You get it? Yeah. Well, that kind of can you kind of touch me like that. Okay. Well, then what we can do is we'll just do this. Can we do the rest? Yep. We're just gonna zest up a good bit of this orange. Um, this orange peel has an awful lot of wonderful flavor in it. That looks like it's enough. Can I put it in? Well, I'll just scrape it up on my knife and we'll do it that way, okay? Okay. Now, what we're going to do now is we've already juiced one. Push that into the center real hard and then twist it around and make sure all the juice goes into the cup. We want about a cup or just over a cup of liquid. It can be orange juice. I think that helps add a lot of wonderful flavor. Um, it could be water, it could be apple juice. Just about anything you want. Can I finish it up? I actually want to do all the rest. Okay, you do all. You can do the other one, Dad. Actually, I want to do that. Dad, it actually looks fun when I do this. Okay. That's why I want to do the other one. Okay, here, let me finish that one, and then you can do some of this one. Okay. Okay, uh, just remount all the juice. It's even how I taste it. I have two oranges here that we've juiced. Um, you could use orange juice that you bought. Um, fresh is always really good because you have a wonderful flavor that you just can't beat. Okay, I'm gonna do this one just because it's faster, okay? 
end. If you get pulp in there, that's not going to matter because that again, that's just going to add some flavor um, and texture to the cranberry sauce. There we go. Can you, now, can you pour the juice in? Mm -hmm. Good job. Believe it or not, that's going to be plenty. Okay, and now we just get it onto our flame. We put a cover on and we let it sit. We're going to let that sit and cook until it starts to bubble. And then we're going to add a couple of cloves and some cinnamon and we'll blend it up and then our cranberry sauce will be done. Mm -hmm. So we'll be back in just a little bit. Okay, our cranberries are ready. If you take a look, have the cover on, it's nice pop. and boiling. You okay there, Izzy? Yeah. And the cranberries are starting to pop open nicely. And so we're gonna take, I have three cloves. We're gonna dump those in. And can you give it a couple of shake, good shakes of cinnamon there? That's probably good. Okay. And now very carefully, give it a stir. Stir it up. You'll grab it and make sure you stir it in nicely. Okay. There you go. And we're at the point now where we can actually, we'll turn this off the heat. And we're going to take our stick mixer or burr mixer, whatever you decide to call it. And at this point, you can leave this as chunky or as smooth as you want. I kind of like mine in between, so we're just gonna... Mix this up a little bit. Leave some chunks in there. Yep, you can do that. Down there. Press it and wait, right there. Okay, that's probably good. So, what we're going to do now is just let it cool and then we'll put it in the bowl and put it in the fridge. And tomorrow, when we're ready, we just bring it up to whatever temp we want and we're going to have an absolutely wonderful cranberry sauce. Mm -hmm. You're very good, right? Mm -hmm. See you in a little bit. All right, so it's time to take the turkey out. What we've done is I've got a thermometer in it. We've taken it to 165 degrees. That's the safe temp for poultry. Um, and I hadn't mentioned it before, but if you buy a bird that has one of those little automatic pop-out things, take that out because that is chemical controlled for temperature. And it sometimes is accurate, sometimes it's not it's much easier to just use a regular thermometer. And if you don't have one that can go in the oven, get one that you can just reach in and test quick. Put it in the thickest part of the uh, breast, and when you get to 165, you're golden. Uh, we've reached 163, which is fine because by the time we bring it out and let it rest, the residual temp in, it, in the bird is going to take the temp up to past 165. Ready, Is? Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you open that up for me? Okay. Here is our turkey. After it reached about 140 degrees, I took the foil off and added little bit of the brown butter on the top so that we could brown very nicely. We'll take the thermometer out. And that is our bird. So now what we're going to do is transfer the bird to a, a clean pan so that we can take out the carrots and put these in another pan that those are ready for us for tomorrow. The reserve pan drippings 
we're going to just set aside along with all of the onions and celery that's still in it and that will be used to create our gravy tomorrow right. after we do another turkey tomorrow and if you can hear that our skin is nice and crispy on the outside so we're just going to lift it like this let it drip a little bit move that over and then just to make sure that we keep it hot <clears throat> We retent the bird, and now here. Watch your fingers. What we can do is. Can I do it? Yes. You can take the. and grab the carrots. Just grab one carrot. Okay, they're gonna break, so try to grab it in the middle. These are nice and tender after cooking in all these wonderful juices and spices. Can I do the last one? Yep. There you go. So now again, here we'll reserve this for tomorrow. We'll pull the fat off of it because we don't need that in there. But this is going to make, after we strain it out, just absolutely wonderful gravy. So there you go. That's our turkey. And it turned out, as you can see, nice and golden. And it should be plenty juicy on the inside. Did I look bold? We'll come back tomorrow and we'll make our mashed potatoes and our stuffing. And then I'll show you a special trick on asparagus too. Until then, see you later.